And it's day 63 of the Atlantic Hurricane season, day 81 in the Eastern Pacific, and that's where we have a hurricane active at the moment, Hurricane Gill, currently with winds of 80 miles per hour. We also have an Invest 90E in the Eastern Pacific. Um, the Atlantic is uh, still fairly quiet, though we do have 91L, uh, which has resurfaced near the near the Bahamas. Um, and in the Western Pacific, we have quite a bit of activity still going on. Tropical Storm JB, which is intensifying, and two Invest currently located in the Western Pacific. You can see them here, Invest 93W and Invest 94W currently located in the Western Pacific, 93W near Taiwan at this point, and 94W just north of Papua New Guinea. Uh, JB itself is moving towards China, more on that very shortly. Um, we have Jill, of course, moving towards the west in the uh, Eastern Pacific, and 90E, which currently has a 40% chance of development um, further east. Looking at the Atlantic then, 91L is currently located over the Bahamas. This is the same system that was at Dorian once upon a time, and this storm is expected to move towards the uh, generally north-northwest, perhaps curving towards the northeast eventually. And looking at the Indian Ocean, things remaining fairly quiet at the moment. Obviously not too much going on at this time of year. Things remaining fairly quiet. You can just about see JB as well off to the uh, very northeast of that image there in the Western Pacific. But as for the Indian Ocean, things remaining quiet. Looking at the sea surface temperatures then, as usual the eastern Pacific is rather warm, especially in the Mexican coastline. The whole of the Gulf of Mexico is around 28 degrees or more and there's a little spot near Bermuda now that's reaching 28 degrees as well in the Atlantic. So very warm waters throughout most of the uh, western half of the Atlantic which is certainly interesting for any storms that form over that way. Um, and also in the Pacific as well, uh, the South China Sea is not too hot in, in comparison with the area around Hainan and uh, east of the Philippines. Um, so that may prove maybe a little bit of um, difficulty for JB, but probably not. Hurricane Gill is currently at wind speeds of 80 miles per hour, pressures 988 millibars. Position is currently 14.3 degrees north, 125.1 degrees west. And is expected to move pretty much arrow straight towards the west over the next few days, possibly reaching a peak of 85, maybe 90 miles per hour, but um, seems somewhat unlikely at this stage. Um, and the storm is expected to move towards the west. You can see um, an area of low shear. Um, developing towards uh, straight, straight ahead of it but there is lots of high shear just to the north of the storm so if it does jog a bit off to the north then uh, it might find itself in a bit of difficulty. Behind that of course we have 90E which is currently um, probably just on the borderline of that shear to the east of the storm um, so you can see why it's 40% with a fairly um, borderline environment. Top of storm JB currently with wind speeds of 50 miles per hour, pressures 989 millibars, position 17 degrees north, 113.3 degrees west, uh, degrees east rather, and is expected to move towards the north uh, west and then move over Hainan Island as a possibly a strong tropical storm and then move eventually into northern Vietnam as a tropical storm and then eventually dissipate over land, possibly over northern Thailand as it comes to it. Um, and we also have blue typhoon warnings in effect for parts of southern China, including Hainan Island, of course, that's the main focus at this point. Signal 3 warning in effect for Hong Kong and signal 1 warning in effect for Macau in China at the moment. That's the current situation in terms of any warning signals. But and the storm's still quite far away from land at this point. Looking at the overview then of the Western Pacific, you can see JB moving towards the uh, slowly towards the west, uh, sl fairly slow movement, but you can see just moving towards the north in those last few frames as it uh, begins to intensify. You can certainly see the um, core of the storm becoming a little bit more intense in those last few frames. You can also see um, Invest 93 which is moving past Taiwan there. Um, and Hurricane Gill, this is the floater imagery. You can see it looked fairly impressive uh, not too long ago, but it's uh, waned a little bit, but it seems in the very last few frames a little bit more intense cloud coverage is coming back into the scene. So we'll see how that um, goes about in the next uh, 24 hours or so, but um, it's certainly moving towards the west and um, with wind speeds of hurricane strength, category 1 hurricane strength, 80 miles per hour. And this is the floater imagery close-up of JB moving towards slowly towards the northwest at the moment. Um, in terms of cloud cover, some of it is reaching Hainan Island, not the centre point of the storm, not the most intense showers at the moment. So most of the storm is still staying offshore. Uh, Vietnam is getting hit by quite a lot of cloud cover as well as a result of um, JB moving towards the uh, nor northwest at this stage and this is invest 91 there isn't that too much there isn't too much of it over the bahamas at the moment but um, you can see it moving very slowly perhaps towards the northwest at this point um, certainly in those last few frames it's fizzled out a little bit so it remains to be seen whether it will pick up again in the next um, few hours so the cmc forecast takes 91l uh, towards the north just offshore 
of um, the United States East Coast and um, could develop it into a tropical storm and then move out to sea, uh, turning extra tropical along the way. As for the Eastern Pacific, I believe it had another storm forming eventually. The ECMWF um, has Gill moving off to the west and another storm forming, maybe even two storms towards the end of that run. No mention of 91L in the Atlantic um, or indeed any other systems that may form in the Atlantic anytime soon. GFS has a bit of a tropical wave in the Atlantic moving towards the west past the Cape Verde Islands but doesn't get very far. Um, Gill moves off to the west in the uh, eastern Pacific and another system forms um, not too far from Mexico towards the end of that loop there. And the Navgem model takes uh, Gill towards uh, generally the west-northwest direction, just north of west. Um, and it also shows the wave moving through the Atlantic, possibly as a strong tropical wave, but I doubt it would reach tropical storm status. You never know, though. Uh, and the GF GFDL model takes um, Gill off to the west as a hurricane, maybe even peaking at 85 miles per hour with a system behind it that doesn't reach tropical storm strength. That would be 90E uh, and no system behind that. The HWRF is fairly similar as well, moving the storm towards the west. We'll be dipping a bit to the south towards the end of that one there. And this is the static model plot. You can see um, how most of the models differ um, as time goes on through the forecast period. Some take it up to the, towards the north, some push it back towards the south and some take it pretty much hour straight towards the west over the next few days but one, one thing is for certain and is that it's not likely to affect land over the next five days. The CMC model uh, takes the current storm JB into China um, as a stronger storm, uh, high, high and tropical storm probably and another system moving through the Philippines and maybe even another one behind that as well in the Philippine Sea and the GFS model takes JB into China and then another storm following in rapid succession and then another storm forming uh, and then moving past Luzon Island in the Philippines and um, that second storm moving into Hainan and northern Vietnam as well which could cause a bit of a flooding issue if that one was to verify and looking at the overall predictor season scores then for August the second so far uh, the top three in first place William with 71 points Hurricane Barbara with 70 and BFDIA submission 2 in third place with 68 points that's the current top three there were 166 predictions I believe there may be even more actually now um, but you can submit your own storm totals at the website force13.com forward slash interactive and I can't stress enough that you should get there um, pretty quickly if you haven't done it already because scores uh, the potential score goes down quite rapidly at this point because the skill level goes down as time goes on of course so what happened on this day then on August the 2nd, 1973, subtropical storm Alpha dissipated near Maine. In 1982, Hurricane Gilmer dissipated in the eastern Pacific. In 1990, Hurricane Bertha turned post-tropical near Nova Scotia. Also that same year, tropical storm Edward formed near the, the, near the Azores. And in 1995, tropical storm Delilah dissipated in the eastern Pacific on this day on August the 2nd. You can see pictured there, Edward forming near the Azores. In 1998, Tropical Storm Alex dissipated in the Atlantic. Uh, also that same day, Otto formed in the Western Pacific. That one's pictured at peak intensity. In 2001, Tropical Storm Barry formed in the Gulf of Mexico. I think that one's pictured next. And in 2002, Tropical Storm Camuri formed in the Western Pacific. And in 2004, Tropical Storms Malu and Maranti, both of them, formed on the same day in the Western Pacific on this day, August the 2nd. Uh, in 2005, Tropical Storm Harvey formed in the Atlantic. In 2007, Usagi made landfall in Kyushu, uh, the southern island of Japan, as a Category 2 typhoon. That one's pictured there as well. In 2010, Tropical Storm Colin formed in the Atlantic. In 2011, Tropical Storm Emily formed near Dominica. And in 2012, Damre made landfall in China as a Category 1 typhoon with 14 fatalities and $640 million in damages. And don't forget you can track any storm that forms or indeed any that are active at the moment at the website force13.com forward slash storm tracking dot html that's the main page for the storm tracking information which shows you the overview map where the storms are and at the top and bottom tables which show you the intensities um, and any invests as well that may be going around and also any warnings that are in effect at a glance um, and then you can go further in depth um, to your area of interest basin by basin see uh, where the storms are expected to go the tracking map which shows um, the trajectory for the storm and indeed any warnings that are currently in effect in more detail and storm credentials and storm informations in more details as well um, and uh, the forecast of course um, and you can also visit Force 13 on the social pages, social media, YouTube, Facebook and Twitter Force 13 is on all three of those channels just search Force 13 on the relevant place wherever you are and uh, you should find us fairly easily enough and please don't forget to show your support by doing the usual engagement uh, proceedings by liking, following, subscribing, favouriting commenting or indeed anything else that you may think of that I cannot. 
Um, and I very, very much appreciate, as always, any comments that come in, um, positive or otherwise, as long as it um, remains civil. Um, but for the time being, that's probably going to be our last update for um, the next 24 hours. So don't forget as well, the new Storm Discussion Forum is online at the website force13.com. Uh, that's been going for just over a week now. I think it's a bit longer than that. I'm losing track of time here. Um, but that's um, up and running. If you would like to participate in any Storm Discussion, please check it out. And... Um, Sign up as a member if you wish. Uh, the next bulletin will be coming up at around midnight UTC on Saturday morning. That will be the 3rd of August 2013. And um, there probably won't be an update during the day because um, I won't be in the office, as, uh, so to speak. Uh, but there you have it. Uh, the next bulletin coming up at around midnight UTC tomorrow. But that's all for now.